Welcome to Crypto Mastery Class. We're at week number 44 of 2022, where we make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl, and we have Joe, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators online, and we're going to go over the news, overall market, hot movers in the basket, indicators, and most importantly, questions and answers. Is Bitcoin really resilient? Disclaimer. This is just an opinion expressed here. It's not investment advice. Bitcoin shows resilience despite poor macro conditions as outflows from exchanges accelerate. This is by Anna on Finbold.com. So Bitcoin has recorded significant resilience in price and a massive outpour from crypto exchanges despite the unfavorable de developments on traditional markets, according to an analysis by Christian Paluski, an expert with crypto analytics platform CryptoQuant, published on October 31st. So there is a poor macro situation we should discuss. According to Paluski, the negative macro patterns include the liquidity crisis in the bond markets, as well as the difficulties that have been engulfed the real estate state sector and in anticipation for the up and coming Federal Reserve's funds rate hike and the U.S. labor market report. In addition, he explained that I believe that the next few days will be useful to understand the direction of the equity markets and given the close correlation also of the crypto market. We also add the tensions on the geopolitical front with Russia suspending the wheat deal after the attacks on Sevastopol. Finally, Paluski concluded that it will not be boring as we will see if in such a scenario, Bitcoin will have the strength to break the resistance at 21,000. Elsewhere, crypto trading expert Rekt Capital noted on November 1st that the new Bitcoin monthly close is in which solidifies Bitcoin's return into the 20,000 to 23,300 macro range. Adding that Bitcoin may need to dip in that short term into 20,000 for a retest attempt to fully confirm its return to the above range. Some crypto analysts expect a very bullish year for Bitcoin, taking into account the decentralized finance, DeFi, assets behavior in previous years, specifically similarities with its technicals from 2019. On the other side, we have Medicaid, M-C-A-D-E is the ticker symbol. It's become a success story like Solana, or can it become a success story like Solana? This is on CryptoNews.com. So like Solana, Medicaid is aiming to become a disruptor in its field. Medicaid, or CAID, is a community hub designed for the future of gaming. It's the platform where GameFi fanatics, crypto enthusiasts, entrepreneurs, and developers link up and immerse themselves in everything Web3 has to offer. Medicaid has three primary objectives to help users find their next favorite play to earn titles, earn more from gaming, and, con and connect with like-minded players. So Medicaid is planning to become an entirely self-sustaining ecosystem that produces some of the hottest Web3 games on the market through Meta Grants. Medicaid plans to have an arcade filled with titles developed and endorsed by the community, and Medicaid intends for its platform to be the best resource for finding and earning more from play to earn games. Eventually, this is the best part about this particular project, is that the team behind Medicaid intends to hand over the management to the community through a decentralized autonomous organization. Thought that was pretty exciting to know if you have some people in your life that are very into gaming and they want to monetize it, maybe something you want to let them know about. So let's look at the overall market, Bitcoin and Ethereum. But before we do that, we're going to look at the market cap for all of crypto. It hit $1 trillion. So in the last seven days, you could see that it was as low as $950 billion, and now it jumped $64 billion in seven days. So take note, could be a new trend. Let's hope it keeps moving up. On a one-week performance market cap heat map, this is the heat map, on a block market cap block size, 
you can see that Ethereum went up 16%. So if you're new to heat maps, what it is is you have three shades of green and three shades of red. The darkest shade of green means that this particular asset has gone up three steps in price. And the darkest shade of red means that the asset went down three steps in its price. So at this point, you could say APT, that is a dark red. It's too far for me, uh, too small for me to see exactly how much it dipped in the last seven days. But I think you could tell your attention to the three dark greens in the event that you had accumulated this within seven days ago. You may want to check your portfolio and possibly take some profit. So Ethereum, Sheeb, and Binance, and Doge, and AVAX, and Uni, Stealth, XCN, and Chills. Looks like those all three went up a significant amount to earn the dark green heat map color. All right, so we are going to use the CryptoMastery.online indicators now. So if you want to use those two to just subscribe to them, go to CryptoMastery.online, and you can actually use them too. So here's Bitcoin USD on a one week performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators applied to my trading view charts. So you have the average true range for the one week of Bitcoin has not been triggered to go into the upward entry of the average true range. It has not flipped yet. So that is good for someone that wants to get in at the lowest point. All right, we got to make sure it's not dropping though. We're also waiting on the early reversal in the upper areas. Those are the arrows that you see. So the last arrow that triggered for Bitcoin was the downward arrow for the one week chart analysis. So we're waiting on that early reversal to come in. But down in the indicators below, we have the trend and the trend already triggered the key saying, hey, there's an opportunity coming. The bell came in and then you have the one and the two that are basically saying, yes, we are still moving in the upward direction. So that is a good sign that we could be out of the dip of Bitcoin too. Now the radar is showing that momentarily for the 60 minute, which is one hour, the 240 minutes is a four hour, the D stands for one day, that is showing a trend in a downward direction, but overall in the week, it is moving upward. So that's a good sign for the radar for somebody that has more stamina and that is more of a long-term on Bitcoin versus like a one day trader or a, 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 an intraday, like a one, an hour trader. Now you have the trend strength indicator. It's also known as the TSI, that momentum, those green arrows moving upward. Those show in the last three weeks that the trend strength is showing that Bitcoin looks like it's moving upward. The signal line is still in the green as it's moving upward. The volatility index, this is my favorite. This shows it's oversold. Anything under 20, it goes in the oversold zone. 20, zero to 20, that's what the oversold zone is on the volatility index. And it's coming up for the one week chart of Bitcoin, a volatility index of 5.64. Super exciting for people that are in acquisition mode and want to get something on super sale. So that is a good sign because you have a lot of room to grow before it gets in the overbought zone, which is an 80 to 100. So very exciting for Bitcoin enthusiasts. Uh, keep watching. You know, and, and if you have time to let your uh, your investment season, then this may be a good moment for you. All right, now we have Ethereum. This chart's a little different. You've got notes on it from our class of last week, and I wanted to leave them there because I wanted you to see what we were working on last week and what we were waiting for this week, and it happened. So this is a one day performance chart with Ethereum USD with the crypto mastery indicators applied. So last week we were zoning in on the early reversal chart and the average true range. And for that average true range to switch into the upward direction, we needed to surpass where that orange line was, which was at 1,437. And it happened in the last seven days. And so therefore that's where you see, bam, the star was, that's where we were at last Tuesday. And it 
went beyond $1,437 and thus trigger the average true range indicator. So I thought that was great for you guys to see in almost real time, well within the last seven days. So then down we have the trend indicator. It is still trending. It got a new bell so it'll start a new seven day cycle and let's see if that cycle has enough upward momentum to carry through i do will quickly switch over to the radar so this is a little early warning sign here um when you see the tsi as a red arrow down um that is in sync with the radar showing 60 minute one four hours and one day average moving down so just remember what comes up goes down things move that's why technicals are so important in swing trading can really help you conserve your your portfolio because you can see what is happening and you can make a sound decision because you're managing your own portfolio you know can you sustain the next downward wave and that's a personal decision and something you need to ask for yourself so i will tell you this the trend strength is showing that it's going to move down now it's an obvious situation if you understand these indicators the trend strength indicator is in overbought zone so it's hitting a little mini ceiling on a one remember this is a one day performance so the shorter the time frame the more ups and downs that you have which is exciting it means that this market is volatile and it's alive and that's where things it's where you accumulate funds if you understand the heartbeat of this particular whatever coin you're working with. Okay, so this, so therefore I'm saying that if you're at a profit, it may be a time to take profit if you're wanting shorter time ranges. You have the signal line that is still in the upward director, direction, but you can see there's a little curve in. The closer that green line gets to that gold line, that means it could switch. So. The trend strength indicator, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to that one. It's typically an early indication, all right? So the other particular, uh, the other signals may come in, in alliance with that. And then you need to be realistic, even though we all think rainbows and butterflies and everything's going to keep going up. This is the real world. These are charts. They go up, they go down, okay? So there is an ending to the ceiling, all right? So then we have the volatility index. I want you to see that it is in the black zone. We call it let the cake bake zone, just to make this fun. Uh, you can look to the right-hand side and the, whatever the black highlighted number is, that's what the volatility index is right now. So today on a one-day performance chart of Ethereum, the volatility index is 65.94. So it's not in the oversold zone, which is 20 and under the red zone it's in let the cake bake so it has not gotten up on the volatility index chart to the oversold zone but i also want to bring your attention back to the tsi and if you look at the history of the tsi indicator when it says it's going to go down it does go down so you saw earlier on the heat map that ethereum was up 16 percent a lot of people are going to take some profit so you know if you're at profit don't let other people take your profit for you or if you have stamina and you're looking for years down the road, then then you'll probably be fine. All right. So now our basket, we have in the basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So we're going to look at the hot movers in the baskets today. There are none. All right. Hey, that is life. It's OK. So I organized our basket within percentage change and currently looks like I think there was a pretty big upswing last week. and Some people are taking some profit. So in the ones that I, I organize this by percentage change by the least. So Ethereum has the least being taken profit of right now. Then Bitcoin, Litecoin, Solana, Cardano, Harmony, Atom, Algorand, Phantom, Link and Polymath polygon all right so then we have the crypto screener so this is filtered by coinbase coins and then i filtered it by percentage change this is something that comes to you with a trading view account and at this point rareable rary governance paris dogecoin polymath which is not polygon so don't get those mixed up potical and voyager 
are the ones that are up right now. But notice the technical ratings are different for them. And this is not something that I actually go by. I, I don't go ahead and say, oh, okay, I'm gonna buy it because TradingView Technical says to buy it. I'll take this knowledge and then I'll apply my crypto mastery indicators to the chart and then I'll go into a deep dive analysis of making a good sound decision. Is this something right for me to buy right now? Or if you already have those in your portfolio, it may be one of those things where you're looking for the ones that have a strong sell indicator, which knows which will help guide you to where you would know what to sell. All right. So now we're going to jump into some live charts and we'll review the crypto indicators on those live charts. So if you want to get them, you can go to cryptomastery.online. All right, we're going to get into live charts and Joe's going to come online with us. So Joe, let's jump in and let's look at the charts and see what we can find. I wanted to see, we can pull up, this is our crypto mastery. And while Joe's getting on the line, we can. Hi, Susie. How's it going? Hey, Joe. Great. How are you? All right. Doing well. Just um, kind of clicking through here. Wanted to find, uh, you know, right now we have a, a Fed meeting that's a, a two day meeting. And tomorrow um, they'll make the announcement on interest rates. So the market right now is really consolidating and I think it's getting ready to make a big move. Okay, I think that's just found something I was looking you know, for. Do you think it's well, going to move up? That's the million dollar question, right? <laughs> well, um, I, I, you know, I mean, we can only go based off of the clues. There's, there's a couple markets that are positioning now with the clues, um, such as can, can, before we jump into those, can we just look at Ethereum and Bitcoin? Because I um, just wanted everybody to understand the, the the power of the TSI. And I feel like it would be helpful if we explained a little more in depth this red indicator here on Ethereum. Sure. Let's start there. Yeah. Do you just want to explain, you know, with this TSI, well, if something is well, bullish, the they should have yeah like when we last spoke last week we were looking for it to challenge the uh, ATR which is um, comes in at about the 15 quarter and she actually went a little bit higher and she broke the level and at this point the TSI is showing its first red dot so there's a couple of different things going on here one we got the initial move that we wanted which was um, the move uh, to break the ATR yeah. and to move higher. In addition with that, we also had the movement on the TSI. So we did get the initial movement. Now, whether or not this market will keep going, it's questionable. I mean, right now the TSI is giving its first red dot and that would be a clue to downsize. And if you look at the trend indicator, the trend indicator is coming close to the moving average. So at this point, we may see the color stop printing as well. Yeah. And it has gone a little bit down here, even though the bell came in because of the trajectory. So. Do you remember this is a one day chart, so that's going to have a lot more movement. I mean, I'll you OK if I go out for a little bit more and I'll go to a one week chart because some people don't buy and sell for a year because they're wanting that tax advantage of long term trades. So if someone's just in it for a year, this won't be significant to them. So if we pull it out. For a. Uh, a one week perspective average, then we still are waiting for that breakout for the average tree range on a one week to change. Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> I just think on the short term, once the TSI gets up to that over broad zone, you know, you really want to, um, 
you know, be cautious on any longs that you have and look for the TSI to come down. So it's just uh, like on a scale from one out of 10, being that the TSI is now at the overbought mark, it, it would be a five versus last week when we were reviewing things and it was, you know, more of a seven or eight. Yeah, I, I want to just because I know when I started crypto it was a little confusing with the different time frame charts. So I want to just emphasize that if you're a short term trader, then that's a really important TSI that came in. Like he, like Joe said, when he says scale out, it's when when Joe scales out, he'll take maybe 20 percent during certain indicators he'll say all right well tsi came out so i'm going to take profit of 20 percent of my total holdings and then if the trend starts going bad then he'll take out if the entry um switches directions he'll take out so one two three four there's four different places and then you can a radar could be five or this could be five so if you have 20 percent and you're slowly taking things out or taking profit along the way um, that could be a strategy. Do you have a a take profit strategy that you'd like to reveal to the group today, Joe? <laughs> well, I, I, I like to scale yeah. in and scale out. <laughs> scale Slowly. in and scale out. That's what I like to do and look for clues. And there's always going to be other markets. So, you know, for me is, right. is to trade the best setups, the most highly probable setups with the technology and, um, and uh, you know, win at, at trading. So it's, right. Uh, for right now, like I was in Ethereum right here. My alert went off this morning. And uh, at this point, like I scaled out. And uh, right now I'll wait to see what happens in here tomorrow before I, I maybe look to redo a position. And if um, the market does start to head lower and I get an additional red dot on the TSI, well then I'm definitely going to probably just wait more and just let the market come to me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's always a joy for me when I go into my portfolio and I go, ooh, I have all this USD sitting there or USDC, the stable coins where I'm perching my profits. And then when I see someone that dropped super low and that volatility index is below 20 and I can see that it's about to reignite, you know, like the phoenix out of the fire, then, you know, you've got that perched profit in that stable coin basket and you can just go right back in. It's like money recycling. So, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's really a good, uh, easy way to explain the process of getting in and getting out, scaling in and scaling out. All right. So, guys, we're open for questions. So, you're more than likely, like, please put them in the questions box. And um, this will be on YouTube. So, uh, let us know if, if, you don't want anything said. And if you are on YouTube, you can probably put a questions in the comments and we'll comment live on YouTube. All right. So what do you have for us today, Joe, that you want us to look at? If not, I can go through the screener because there's some pretty cool stuff in that screener. Oh, sure. Well, why don't you go through the screener first and then uh, I'll bring in mine at yeah. the end. Yeah, this is great because I want you guys to be independently awesome and i want you to know some secret ways to find awesome things going on in the market so i just went into the screener just a quick review on how to use this and i go into filters and right here you can click down and pick what exchange you're going to pull things out of so i did coinbase but you could also do coinbase and binance us if you're in the united states there's a few exchanges that you know we can access so i just added one to it now so it's going to be a little different now, honestly, I didn't do this, but I'm going to do it right now. Market capitalization, I do want to only invest in something that has a larger market cap than a million just because I don't want to go into some really risky coins that don't have a lot of money invested in them. So let's see if we'll, we'll go to a million. Let's see if it kicks any of that out. If you're high risk, then yeah, you can go for low low market cap all right so let's see if that still makes it great so rareable still made that cut so 
you can split your screen so that you can see this actual chart while you see the information on the crypto screener. So I'm just going to jump down. So we know Rare is good. So let's put that on the, the, the we're going to review that. And then Parasite Q. Boom. Look at that. Amazing. That one. We'll look at that one. And then we'll look at uh, how to call. And that one, it, that, that radar is looking really good. So let's start with Rary. That's okay. Wow. Look at that, Joe. We're on a one day chart, guys. So that I think would, I would say it's too high to buy. <laughs> well, how would you, um, how would you, uh, whoa, Joe, look at that. What is that about? How would you allocate or describe this one, Joe? Look at that. The candles is still going. 185% well, in days. Basically, what, what you're seeing there is, is it's really the power of when the cycle changes in the market. And, and then sometimes, like, when a market moves like that and you're not in it, you know, sometimes you just, um, you know, uh, you know, you're just going to have to wait for the next bust because it becomes really risky placing a trade once you get a, a movement like that in such a quick <laughs> Time frame, yeah. you know. <laughs> You're late for that party. You missed the cake. You missed the wedding, and uh, they're like, um, they're opening gifts right now. Basically, it's over. The food on the buffet is gone. Yeah, look at that. I mean, right before our eyes, it's dropping so much. So exactly. So you let this one settle down and correct itself. But it's it's good to find that on the screener. It indicates where the activity is. Um, that is a good signal line. So I say, let this just get back down to reality. <laughs> but but as far as these time frames go, it's great. And this one could be a new one on Coinbase. Um, you know, there's a lot of new ones that are, I think, just getting on Coinbase now, which most likely is inspiring that spike. Um, all right, so you wanna go to the next one? Let's see. Oh, that's that same one. So hang tight. Well, Rary governments. Oh no, this one. Rary government governments. Okay, one second. Let's shrink that. Oh right. So this was big enough to trigger the the average true range to hit in. And this is a one day chart. So the early reversal came in a long time ago. One thing that I do like about this is that that volatility index is below 20, it's at 12. The signal line is going, the TSI has triggered, and you have the key came, has come in. Well, what do you think, Joe? You there? All right. Well, he may have some yeah. audio issues. It, okay. uh, you know, uh, what I want to say is, is that you're seeing a lot of these uh, markets break this cycle, and it's a like two month cycle down, and the ATR is really what's showing this. So when you first get these initial moves, they they're explosive. Yeah. So do you with the election coming in? with all the, as we said in the news, the macro obstacles that we're dealing with right now, do you feel like something can emerge out of this? And, and be well, I think that we're gonna see in here, really, what you're seeing right now is, is everyone in preparation for tomorrow on the Fed's announcement. And once these Feds make their decision, if they're gonna move, another 75 points on interest rates. That's what's gonna have an impact to the market. And uh, the market is uh, on edge. So it's, right now you're just seeing uh, the market money flow shifting around, just, you know, moving around and we'll probably, you'll probably start to see it in that coin, coin cap as well. Coin cap. Yeah, so $60 yes. billion dollars movement in, in one week is, is is pretty exciting for crypto enthusiasts. So do you think that raising that interest rate is gonna defer people from investing in real estate and putting it into crypto instead? 
<laughs> I'm not sure. I hope they do. I hope they but they put it in there. I mean, the, right now, I think what's weighing on the crypto is really the war, and we really need some type of peace or a resolution to really get the whole world out of this whole global sticky global situation that's going on so it's just not one thing which is maybe holding back crypto um what, what's good about uh, crypto is is that there's so many different markets that when you have the technology and you have the tools well you're able to consistently find an opportunity you know where you're not chasing and because it, it's okay that if you look at the market and the market has, has already made a price movement you have the tools you can move to another, go to another market, right? That's the option someone else doesn't right. have. That doesn't have the tools. They don't have that option. So, you know, you have the advantage by having the technology that the average person doesn't have. Whereas the average person is most likely caught up in FOMO, where they're always constantly trying to race, missing something. Versus someone which has the tools and the technology, they're more in a position of letting the market come to them, strategize, scale in, scale out. You're, you're being a good trader. You're utilizing the clues. You know, I mean, one of the markets I was wanted to talk about earlier was again like the ERI. You know, just like how consistent this this ERI is at different pivotal points in the market, which it's one of the best tools that we have. This one. So he's ha guys, he's talking yeah. about that the early reversal indicator is is this right here. So what I can do is I'll go into that crypto screener and we'll look. No, let me just max I okay. So we're gonna look just through here and see which one has an ERI. So this one triggered one one day chart, one, two about ten days ago. So on the twenty third that well, triggered. You know, one. Well, I just wanted to go jump to one market here a second. If you take a look in here, right, and this is the um, one of the new ones, USD CGBP. It's one of the new ones, and it's a pound. And again, on Coinbase. So that's a stable coin. So the stable coin. Um, the GBP. Yeah. B G as in backspace. Okay. Uh, B as in boy. Oh, you're saying it's the pound. K. Okay. okay. That's what I'm talking about. That's sexy. You know, like you have the technology, you have the tools, so you set your alerts in here, and like if you um, apply in there the other uh, indicators, you can see in there the TSI. So now you'll be waiting in here for the trend indicator. So now we, we get to have fun with the game. Now let's get your check mark out, Susie. We got the volatility index checked. All right. We got the signal line. We're waiting for it. Uh, the TSI, we got the check. The trend indicator, we're waiting for it. Okay. The ERI, we got the check. We got an ATR number. Like when you're winning, the rules don't change, right? You know, so, so it's the consistency. So, but yeah. the USD is a stable coin. So the USD coin will always be a dollar. So are you thinking you're going to make like a foreign exchange, make money on the, the pound relating to the stable coin? It's almost like a foreign exchange thing with the dollar. Because USD will never go above a dollar. So the Tr only way you're winning. Yeah, but trading is buy good trading is buying low and selling high. It's still a good setup. It's still going to move in here from the setup if it's correct, and there's still room for it to go. Like if you take a look back in here from September, right, and, and that's really just reflective of when the trend started to move up in here. It could challenge in here the ATR and, and drift back up to the top. So, you know, not every market is going to be doing a trade to hit the ball out of the park. I got, I, I have to make two, 200% on the trade, 300%. Good trading is getting on base. You're never going to know how far the market's going to go when it goes. In this case point, I'm just pointing out that, that there's different clues that we have with the chart overlays that are saying, 
here's um, the clues that we look for with these tools, um, which are consistent rules um, for when we're looking for the market to potentially turn. And and in, in this case, it's again, you know, the what I mentioned, the volatility index has a check. You're waiting for the signal line and you could be waiting for the, the bell alert. So in this case point, you know, it should, she may go up and break that ATR. You know, it, it, it may not be good uh, uh, where it's going to go 4,000% move. That's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is just to get on base. It may go back up and challenge the highs that it had up there in October. You see that high up there, Susie, in October? It's like at 88.95. That's where I'm thinking it's going. Well, 88.95, so that's where we need to go for it to switch for the average true range to jump in. All right, and then we're waiting on this. Yeah, the signal line is going to change. This is a good example just for technical. Oh, wait, didn't mean to write that. We're waiting on the signal line. Waiting on. All right, so do you want to give, do you want to, is there anything else you think, or should we look at some of these things going on on the, the, the crypto screener? Sure, go ahead, Susie. Or, well, I was I saw something. Or if you have something else, definitely show me what you got. But following your your let's look at and find something that has the early reversal indicator. Is there anything else that you found? And, and we'll look this one right here. We have yep, early reversal that. payment. I love that it's guys. When you have that red candlestick, it means the volatility index is an oversold zone. Super exciting. So. We have whoo, all green on that radar. So one hour, four hours, one day, one week, all moving up. The trend strength indicator moving up. So I'm going to do a check mark on what is good to go. So that's for the radar. Here's a check for the signal line. Here's a check for the trend strength indicator. We are in a one day. Here's a check for the early reversal indicator. And let's put in our orange line. We're waiting on that average true range, waiting on, so excited, waiting on, protocol to hit that point. Oh, and it's below a penny, this is exciting. I wonder, it's like those penny stackers, but it's below a penny. Um, to uh, trigger the um, average true range. Okay, so we're waiting. We're waiting for pow to call to hit 0 0.00930 cents so that will trigger the average true range to go in the upward direction. Which is right here, which is what that number is right there. And then once it does, then we're gonna switch and it's gonna go to the green zone. So just to give you a perspective, guys, of where this was at one point, whoa. It was at 15 cents. So that is on super, super sale. Wow, it was even higher than that. So from there to about where we are, it's 95.44 cents off from February of 2022. Wow. Actually, it was more than that. It was all the way up to 16 cents. Oh, that would be so exciting for everybody if it ever got back up there, right? It's a long, long haul, but um, maybe it's worth looking into, guys, all right? So um, at this point, you know, 
what you go go take your go take your bottles and like get your five cents back if you're in Connecticut and uh, put it on one of these. This is amazing. You have so many volatility index so low, and you can see that it it was recently put on Coinbase because it, this only goes back to 2022 numbers. So, all right, what what are your thoughts about that, Joe? Well, I, I think that uh, this has a lot of potential with it. Um, the ERI uh, triggered the same day that we're getting the TSI green dot, and we're also getting a cross in the signal line. And so this right here has a lot of potential. You just have to let this thing develop. You know, I, I, I've never heard of this coin before. I'll have to research it myself waiting on trend this is where your indicators get really exciting so it could be a, a low market cap coin and sometimes those are really exciting so I, you know i don't know the fundamentals of this either it's it's worth checking into but let's go back and see what else that we can find by following so i'm going to zone in on joe's early reversal arrow so let's see what else is there um Oh, and actually, TradingView is calling it a strong buy, too. So this is coming in as a sell. This uh... Oh, wow. Actually, they're saying that they're coming in as a sell for that one. All right. All right. So we don't have the early reversal, but we do have the average true range. So how do you feel about that, Joe, when you get the average true range, but you don't get the early reversal? Well. I mean, look, every time is going to be different, you know, depending on the market. You're never going to have the perfect trade. Uh, but what I will tell you is, is that the, the ATR is um, the overall, like what you could say, like the super trend. So once you get the movement in that overall cycle, generally the biases has changed. That's like the, a lagging indicator. It's one of the final ones that turn. So, you know, if you look at the time duration that this thing has been um, in the red histo down with the ATR, it's been like about 60 days. And, and that's generally what you'll see in the cycle is about uh, a 60 day period before that cycle changes. That, that's, that's very helpful. So you guys remember that he said 60 days. So here we go, August. 18th and then everything triggered around here October 31st yep. all right so the next one we have Yasme And we do not, so what I'll do is I'll just zone in on this area, guys, because we do not have an early reversal on that one. So I think I can hear a TV in the background. I don't know if you can close that. All right, then we have the um, entry right here coming in. So the average tree range on Super Farm triggered. We can, wow, look at that. So we have the radar going for one hour up, four hours up, one day, one week up. The average true range has triggered on this one. You have the trend indicator is still in the green. You, on a one day basis though, it's pretty high in the oversold zone. I mean, overbought zone, sorry guys, in that top zone. And then you have that signal line that is moving up. And then you have that volatility index. It's not in my favorite down zone, so I'm not gonna put a check mark there, but it, it is. I guess we could check that because it's technically not in overbought yet. So I would say it still has some room to grow. So, Joe, what is your opinion on this one, the super farm? Uh, well, this coin here, um, I would set my alert for the TSI. And uh, as the TSI gives its first red dot, uh, I would definitely scale out of the position. I mean, today's the first day it's breaking the ATR, so it could uh, trend up a little bit higher. 
and stay with its numeric count. So it, this is one of the trades that's in motion. Okay. That's a great, great exam like recommendation. So basically, if you're in, make certain you're ready to know when it's time to get out so you can take profit and run to the next one. So, you know, as far as if you're not in, would you get in right now? Would you, if you were looking at this one day chart and you had some stamina and you didn't need to take profit for a month or two, if you had time to let this grow, would you scale out and look at a one week chart? Meaning well, when I, I mean, say look, if, you, you could stay in here, positioned in here. Um, if your overall viewpoint is long term, all right, it, you know, um, overall, the momentum is still going up. So as long as you have in here uh, the green dots on the TSI, you can stay in that direction of the market and that trend. All right. Well, we will sneak a peek on the one week and see where that is. So on a one week, it is the volatility index doesn't really um, it take it has to have a lot of data in it in the previous months. Uh, or weeks to to trigger the volatility index data to come in. So this just shows that Superfarm is a more recent addition to Coinbase, and I, and I do know that it is. So you don't have a lot of data, which would potentially defer a lot of institutional money from investing in something like this because they can't use their technicals like we are using. Yeah, do you concur in that? thought process joe would like yes. with institutional they need these data they're not running it off of the human mind they're running it off of algorithms and quants just like we are so i'm just going to let you guys know if you don't have a volatility index on a one week chart i think you need to understand the potential of institutional money coming in which, which could be a good and a bad thing too because they'll make major moves fast when they scale in and scale out. But I want you to have the correct expectations and understand the risk factors that you're jumping in against. So, all right, do you want me to keep going down this line really quick and kind of seeing what TradingView Screener is showing us? Or is sure. there anything else that you jump in? All right, so, uh, all right, you know what? Maybe it'd be good for us to find one that is showing the first red TSI so that they know what it's like to know when to take profit or scale out. So Doge oh, oh, and, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to just say is, is that um, I just found one. Uh, okay, I've been over here trying to find, see, sometimes, you know, you have to, sometimes there, the, there may not be any setups in the market. And then you have to let the market develop. And then sometimes you might be able to find something which is just um, actually this is another current this is another currency USDT EUR interesting so it seems like that the euro and the pound okay are turning up some problems yeah 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 exactly oh, so, and really, this is just clues that we're seeing here, the money flow. The question is, is that, um, you know, do we get the follow through from from the Fed's uh, announcement tomorrow at two o'clock? Yeah, I also heard that the electrical cost over in Europe is just getting so, so bad that a lot of the Bitcoin miners are leaving Europe and coming towards more of a sound electrical cost to to mine. Um, so 
could be a great exodus of Europe happening right now, which you know, could be people converting their euros to other currencies. I, I don't know supply and demand that has an effect, but either way, you see the euro losing value. That's what this is showing me. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, so the pound and the euro, they're just having a hard time over there with their currency, which shows that the USD is gaining more advantage. My heart goes out to the Europeans. That's sad. Hey, well, the question becomes in there, are we going to be, are we going to actually see the Ethereum and the Bitcoin go up with, with a strong dollar? It's going to be interesting how tomorrow plays itself out. Well, with if you have, so is it, what it looks like is, where the, the question is, is like, if you have your currency, your fiat currency of where you live, if it's going down, what are you going to do to stabilize it? You know, one of the things you could do potentially is go towards digital digital stability with the USDC. So maybe people in Europe and um, Maybe they're basically putting it in Coinbase and they're putting it in USDC to stabilize their own currency, their own personal, you know, you know, their own money. Because you could use in Coinbase, they have credit cards, their ATM cards, so and their Visa. So if you just use Coinbase as a bank, as your personal banking account. And they could easily just jump from their bank to Coinbase. And uh, Coinbase is, they just spent millions of dollars on developing an office in Europe. That was in one of the articles I think I posted a few weeks ago. So this could be what's happening is they're onboarding a lot of Europeans into digital currency. But that could be what, what could be happening is instead of onboarding into some volatile digital currency they could be going into the stablecoin usdc or tether in this fact so you you know where you would see that is looking on the coin market cap uh you look at how much money or the heat map you could see how much money is in that market cap because that 60 billion increase in the overall market cap of crypto land doesn't necessarily mean that that was put into Bitcoin or Ethereum. Some of it was in Ethereum, but it could have been put into stable coins because Europeans could be trying to stabilize their net worth. Just, I mean, that I don't know. I shouldn't be talking about that hearsay stuff. All right, so it's just an interesting find, and I let the data be what it is. So. Um, I do want to just a little bit talk about Doge. There was some talk about Elon buying Twitter. Well, Elon has Twitter now, and that there was some kind of news article I read about Doge potentially being one of the currencies used on Twitter. So I think that could be stimulating some of this movement in Doge. Looks like it had a significant jump. 167% in seven days. Did I get that right? That's huge. But I do want to notate that on a on a one day basis, that definitely triggered the average tree range. But let's put a little line there. It is super high. So just be aware of the take profits. The people are scaling in and out. Um, I definitely did make some money on my Doge. Very exciting. But let's just see kind of where. Yeah, 163 in eight days. How do you feel about that, Joe? <laughs> Great <exciting>. move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like it's the uh, take profit, pay taxes, right? Pay, take profit, pay taxes. Um, just make sure you got enough to pay those taxes on that profit. And uh, it's some people people are taking profit. You know, 167 in a market like this that we just gone through. Of course, people are going to be super excited. They're getting ready for their their holiday purchases, right? All right, and what's the next one? Let's see, Polymath. I know we've kind of gone over Polymath a while, a little bit lately. Looks like Sideways City there, but it's still in that average true range of moving up. But then you have the first TSI moving up. That could be something that you know be worthwhile looking at. 
and the radar showing all green looks like a Christmas tree lights. <laughs> um, but do take notice that you have the signal line that's about to, to potentially switch, and then the volatility index is over the oversold zone, so it's in the, the cake bake, and um, you are above that that top Keltner band right here. So I'd say if you're going to scoop it up, let it let it correct itself a little bit potentially. Don't know where it'll end up, but it did surpass that top Keltner band, so it does have some strong momentum. Um, I would recommend waiting for the trend to kick in. Anything you want to say about this one, Joe? Uh, set your alerts when that signal line crosses over. That's a confirmation. Um, right now, it is trending up higher. So, um, if you know we see the green color on the paint bar on the trend indicator, we could see a number three print. Uh, today is the first day that it gave the TSI green dot. So, this is something that may um, be starting to edge its way higher. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, let's see if there's anything else. All right. We have Aster. So that one is the top of the Keltner band on a one day basis. So we have the the average true range is in, but you have that. So here we have the early reversal came in one, two, three, four. Well, it came in on the 20th. But it looks like you know there was still too much momentum to actually take that to make that fall through. Actually, it did right here. So you can see the TSI did follow suit with that, but maybe that is over, hopefully. And then the TSI fought back and then they it went down again, but now it's moving back up. You do have that signal line, and look, there's not a lot of data. So this is on Binance US, guys. So remember, I added Binance US and Coinbase to that watch list. So you could see here it's not been on Binance too long because the data for the signal and the data for the volatility index are not in yet. So that's a risk in itself. It's new, all right? So new doesn't always mean it's the best thing in some sliced bread because you have no history of uh, to go by. So that is, in my opinion, high risk because you don't have any post past data. But some people like risk, right? All right, this is good. This says sell. So let's look at a sell before we jump off for the day. So hmm, what, what I like about this is it's defining the, the I like it when trading views um, suggestion doesn't really line up with our indicators. And that's where you're going to have the, the technological advantages. All right. So the early reversal came in. So that's a good sign. Um, then you have that trend came in as a two, and that's a pretty thick trend line up. You have the radar going up for the one hour, four hours, one day. So I'm going to give the radar a check here. And then you have, this is one thing, um, this is what would Joe say? He's like, you're waiting on the TSI. You want to chime in, Jay? What would you say about this one? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly correct. Keep going. I mean, you're doing great. I I'm I, I don't know where you found this at. I was looking through there and I didn't find this. This is on. So that's um, that's awesome. So what I did is I did this screener, but I I did the crypto screener with Trading View, and I said I don't want anything less than a one million dollar market cap. So even though I kind of gave that last one a hard time saying it was new on Binance, it had to be a one million dollar market cap. So. I would say that has that going for it. Um, the signal line is still in green zone. It's not very far apart from the gold. When the green is not far apart from gold, it's a little risky because at any time it could switch directions and bam, go down. But I'm a super sale kind of girl. I do love the volatility index being low. It's at 3.77, so I'm going to give that an absolute check times three, I mean, 3.77 volatility is exciting. Um, and then one thing I do like about this one, even though it says sell, is that it is recently below the lowest counter man, but it has not gone above the second or the third. So what that means to me, it's got a lot of room to grow in the event that this, this early reversal is going to actually trigger. So I would say this is like early, early, early. Oh, uh, look, the radar just is going down too. So 
give it give it a little bit but put it on your radar let it watch because it's one that hasn't spiked overnight which it seems like a lot of these ones are having overnight spikes so it does have a few things going for it and i think you should definitely keep an eye out for that uh, okay so metal yeah these are these new um ones that are pop-up parties here all right so we do not have the early reversal we don't have the average true range meaning we don't have the early reversal in the upward direction. We do have the trend, so that is good on this one. You do have that radar going for the one hour, four hour, and one day. You do have the trend strength indicator, but this is a one day chart, okay? So for like the, the one week in and out trader people, um, this one is almost in the oversold zone. I mean, bot zone, overbought, guys, this area. So that... It could be switching soon or could you know how long will it stay up in that ceiling the other thing we have is that signal line it, it's it's nice it's separated it's moving upward i do like that the volatility index is low enough to give it a check it's at a 20 whoops sorry guys 29.399 so all right joe what do you think i think that that's um just a great find you know right here and uh uh, I think as long as we have uh, the green dot on the TSI, you have to just stay with the trend. Yeah, and then uh, let's notate that line. Like once it passes the price of that top red line right here, so once it goes over $1.06, that average true range is going to flip. So I'm just going to say waiting for price to pass 1.06 so that average true range turns green which means it's going to go up all right what's that okay it's 103 we've passed our time frame and i hope that helps you guys conclude in today um go back to our our watch box our our these are our coins for the mastery that we we most likely have long-term holds on uh, and we watch constantly um anything else you want to conclude on joe uh no that's it for today and uh well once we get past in here this week i think we'll have a lot more setups next week um as we get more the more direction on the, the the direction of this economy. Yeah, looking forward to seeing the news and um and then that week after that the election. We'll see what happens with that, right? Actually, next Tuesday will be election day. So um wow. We're, we're gonna we'll see you on election day, guys. Very exciting. Okay. <laughs>